fax the market to yep i completely agree but at the same time you know there there are some legacy stuff that does exist and <laughs> yeah like it, it sucks to try to code in that kind of like older languages i agree but when you're first starting off i don't think you have that privilege to to kind of choose whatever you want to do you kind of have to kind of start from the you know that drake song like start from the bottom now i'm here it really is true you got to start from somewhere if you if you're struggling to find a job like say it's been a year or two three four years and you're just not getting anything but you had opportunities to work at these smaller companies or like languages that are a little bit more outdated you're kind of shooting yourself in the foot by not taking those opportunities literally just update your linkedin with that new job you could put software engineer at company xyz and while you're getting paid doing uh, whatever php you could still learn on the side no one's stopping you from learning you only have yourself to blame at that point if you're not progressing in your career and that's the one thing that i need to do a better job about kind of showing in my videos is that i've only been able to get to where I am because I have put in the work. I put in a lot of work to get to where I am. And and I would love to be like, oh, happy go lucky and, you know, show you that I'm successful because I just, I don't know, like became a software developer. But there's just a lot of hours where I had to grind. And yeah, maybe I don't share that part as much, but it really is tough it really is tough and there was just a lot of moments outside of work where on friday nights i was studying till even after i got a job i was working at, <laughs> working outside of work you know because i wasn't happy with my skill set i wasn't happy with my salary i wasn't happy with my situation but the only person that can really make that change is up is you how much are you willing to put the sacrifice in to get yourself to that level to justify those pay increases how much are you willing to put in to you know become that senior level developer how much are you willing to put in to justify you know like commanding the room about what technologies to use that all comes with experience you just have to get better and I, it's not even about money honestly it's really not even about money it's the money comes with your skill set. It really comes with your skill set. As long as your skill set is improving, the money will come. And that's 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 just a straight fact, period. But if you're already thinking about money before the skill set, then you're never gonna get you're never gonna get the skill set to just to get the money. It's it's like this cyclical loop, right? So it's a really tough because the recommendations I try to give is you know, like put in the hard work, but I don't think that we live in an age where Everyone has no patience, no patience to to put in the work. <laughs> like they just want, they want to be a software developer two days ago. They want to be a software developer yesterday, but none of them actually put in the work. And you like, you see their projects, you're like, okay, did you like consider using like a template? Did you consider using bootstrap templates or something, you know, or I ask them a simple question, like, how do you fetch an API? It's, it's one of those things where I'm just like, this should come naturally to you at a certain point, right? I'm not expecting yet. Yeah, you're just starting off to know these things. But if you're at a point where you have a job and then you're interviewing somewhere else and you can't do those things, then what are you doing at work? <laughs> like you're treating work like a nine to five and that's it. And it, I think why I'm so passionate about this is because actually you have to enjoy this. Otherwise, it's just going to be another job, right? Like, why did you get into software development in the first place? Why did you want to leave your old job and get into software development? Is it purely a money play? I mean, and there's nothing wrong with the money play, but if if that is what it is, if that's your goal, then you know, like some people just fall out of love with coding and then you move on to something else. I know so many people that make a lot of money in finance and they hate their jobs. But, you know, at the same time, 
like with coding you have this opportunity to get this right blend of doing something what you love to do which is like solving problems and also get paid and that's like a win-win but some people are so focused on money and like maybe that's the coding boot camp issue too it's like you know graduate from our three-month program and become a 100k developer <laughs> it's like dude why are you telling them that there are levels to this game and some people just think that they deserve to be at the top which is so i don't know sorry i went on this little rant here but uh, hopefully it kind of made sense when i moved to new york it was in march or april and i didn't know anybody and i ex really experienced snow for the first time in a sense of i had to see snow every single day i didn't have the right shoes I didn't have any family near me and it was kind of miserable, man. And especially the three month coding bootcamp. I think three month coding bootcamps, they're good and bad. They're good in a sense that it's only three months, but it's bad that you're cramming so much information. So you just get like super emotional about so many things. And my school would do this thing it's called Feelings Friday, where everyone would just like air, like just throw out their dirty laundry of how they felt that week. And it was crazy the type of stuff people were sharing because this is a stressful time. There was some people were crying. There were setbacks. I, there are times where I wanted to give up too. Not going to lie. There were times where I wanted to give up. And like, is this really what I want to do with my life? But um, you just got to like be able to kind of get through those hurdles. And I, you know, if my story is anything, it's about how someone that's not like talent. Not, I want to say I'm the most talented person, right? But here I am. And it just takes a little bit of work. It takes a lot of work. <laughs> Mix of little, lot, whatever. But it takes work to get to here. So um, I've been a developer for six years. And there's still so much to learn. And there's still so many things I don't know. And that's okay. But like I'm not as stressed as I am now about it. But when I was a junior or just starting off, these fundamental things are just a must-have to know. And you, you can't just expect to get a job just because, you know, I want a job. <laughs> out of all the YouTubers out there, I've never heard any of them saying learning code was a bad idea. They all seem better off when they used to be. That's because you only see the success stories, right? Myself included. But I know a lot of people that have failed with this software developer journey. And not everyone's cut out to be a software developer. I think with coding, it's... You'll have every opportunity to become one. Every opportunity. Free or not free. But not everyone's meant to be a software engineer. Some people just don't want to sit in front of a computer all day trying to solve this problem that is very complex, very hard, and takes hours to figure out. I've seen people slam their desk because, of, because the code was so difficult and not understandable and whatnot. And I'm not saying that's a bad thing, but in my opinion, I feel like, dude, it's just code. You just, you'll figure it out. And yeah, some people just aren't meant to be coders and maybe you just don't see those stories. So that's kind of why I feel like I always want to bring kind of more of a realistic perspective to coding. It's because I think people see these like stories where someone became a developer in like two months or someone became a developer and, you know, they lucked out. And, you know, I'm always happy for those people, but they, that shouldn't be the norm. Some people, it takes years to become one, and that's okay. That's okay. But if our standard of of what is normal is based on someone that's a, based on people that are anomalies, then we're always going to feel like we're not good enough. And that shouldn't be the case. I totally agree. Like, you have to enjoy this. It's it's too stressful. Not it, it's, it's such a stressful job in some ways, but it's also the most rewarding. And if to, I like to describe it like solving this never ending Rubik's Cube. How do I one day you're going to figure it out and then someone's going to be like, all right, so we've changed like four or five different parameters to this. And how would you do this now? And I'm like, crap. Dude, you got me here. You got me now. Now I need to put on my thinking cap and figure this out. And there's just so many different ways to solve this problem. And that's kind of what a life of coder is. <laughs> yeah, maybe I need to look into that. Oh, maybe I'll get that that three-minute clip.